Welcome to Fresh Perspectives Only. In this episode, I talk to the artists Crotchy and Floons about their uh, collaborative, experimental storytelling. Uh, to this point, they've done nine films together, a variety of 2D, 3D, stop motion. Um, and the reason why we wanted to talk to them today is about their latest endeavor, Kerfuffle, which is an animated short film about the battle between the shadow side and the self. The film reimagines what happens when we give in to fear and anxiety. Negative thoughts balloon and hijack a better reality. Our life force is sucked dry. Only a shell of who we really are remains. And if you've not seen this short film, the beauty of this conversation is from the artists yourselves, you'll hear how best to view the short film. The other thing that's really exciting about this, uh, these two collaborating is with the upcoming NFT drop on Portion. Now, this drop is going to be coming out December 8th, 2021. The Crotchy and Floons drop consists of five different characters, Gorkel, Snuff, Glupto, Twazi, and Flurp. The five characters are divided between three different tiers, gold, silver, and bronze, which allow for different price points and different sizes of numbers for the additions. So in addition to covering the film itself, we also talk about how this upcoming portion drop is really meant to help them build the kerfuffle community. Um, a lot of the uh, responses that they got from the film, they're looking to grow on those. You can kind of hear that in the conversation upcoming. Um, so this drop is going to be very exciting. In addition to kerfuffle, we also talk about each of their individual ways of expressing, where they gain inspiration, and just it's a really fun conversation. These two women and these two artists are amazing. Um, I had a really enjoyable time with it, so I hope you do as well. Uh, with that, let's just tee off the conversation. So how did this project kind of arise? Um, I'm assuming y'all knew each other before. Um, was this something that kind of appeared over a conversation or over a long period of time? How did this project come about? Well... <laughs> One morning, I woke up to a text message from Yonk over here, and there was a photo that she had taken of a picture she drew and colored in of a man with a bunch of different colors all over his face. And as soon as I saw it, it was like, <sighs> the story was there. And I called her all manic, like, oh my God, oh my God, this should be this guy. And he's battling his depression and anxiety. And then all of the colors get sucked out of him. And then there's like a, a twin double that appears. And then she was all for it. She was like, yes, like we need to find uh, who can do it. And let's figure out the, the look of it and let's get this going. And I think we have a really nice dynamic of like hype, hype womaning each other up to no end. And it makes a lot of wonderful things um, come into existence. And that was kerfuffle. Yeah. And it, I think it was kind of also in a moment in both of our lives where we were really dealing with grappling with emotions that we can really easily get carried away with. Cause I think we're both just, we feel really deeply with anything we do in our lives. So it's hard to not get completely sucked away by those emotions. So we wanted to really create an abstract way to help people stay in touch with their like most colorful self. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I, I was, I was the first, I think it was the first about two minutes. There was only the single character and then about two minutes in the second character kind of comes into play. So as you're talking about grappling with emotions, right? So assuming, mm -hmm. um, you know, folks listening or watching have seen the video, if not check it out, it's amazing. Um, and what, what does that second kind of character represent? Right, because you're talking about kind of the different bubbles uh, or balloons, rather. Is that is it kind of what you're describing? Those, uh, I guess, the colorful trans as balloons, right? So as that kind of shift happens, what does that second character represent? Is it is it a mirror image, or or I guess, what is that relationship like with the with the first character you see? It's um. Do you know? I'm sure you can relate in some capacity if you have a neurosis or an anxiety or a fear or something in your brain that you, instead of taking conscious steps to make healthy choices and not indulge in it, you start to follow it and feed it and maybe you freak out a little bit. Um, and as you continue to pay attention to it, it grows into something that all of a sudden you can't control any longer. 
and it gets out of control and it will dominate an aspect of your life. Um, sometimes for some people, it'll dominate within minutes. Sometimes it takes months. Sometimes it's a slow burn over years. And then all of a sudden the person you are, your inner spirit has completely disappeared. And in place is this copy that's kind of like nefarious and, and wicked and then existing simultaneously is, is this energy, but then also yourself that's very diminished and depleted and kind of a shell of what it once was. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that second duplicate is kind of like the shadow self that's unintegrated and allowed to have free reign and full control. I love that. Do you have anything like that, Carson? You struggle with any fears or paranoias? Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think it's uh, it, and those. I think they kind of um, it kind of changes in different periods of time, right? So I mm -hmm. feel like that kind of that transition of of this main character that starts out the short and then that transfer to the second. To me, like I, I really enjoyed that kind of transformation. And I feel like for me, it kind of happens multiple times. Um, maybe not all, at, obviously not all at once, but it's kind of interesting to kind of, as you, as you kind of mentioned, there's certain ways in which your, yourself, you kind of flow to this shadow self uncontrollably and you can kind of feel shifts in, in that happening. And it, it can be for more of an anxiety prone um, aspect or way in life, but but uh, on the flip side, I sometimes feel in a positive way, right? Where it's not necessarily a, uh, it doesn't necessarily feel as conscious of a of a move. It it seems kind of just like a slow, um, I guess, tide going in and out, um, mm -hmm. and that can kind of ebb and flow for the negative and or positive uh, way of of kind of life. It's kind of like it's kind of like you're you're kind of observing two different people and but you're like a third observer where you're you're kind of witnessing who you are today but also where you might be flowing and transitioning into um so mm -hmm. it's like an interesting um i don't know it's an interesting observation i thought i thought that was a really cool part um and and as that started happening in the short i actually wrote this down right because this was i found it really interesting because um obviously it's a beautiful film we kind of talked about the music uh before we started recording there's a lot of really cool aspects to the storytelling. The only point within the film um, that has actual text, like actual language, was at about 140. Uh, and it said, uh, things looking up. So I was just curious, um, maybe Yonk, maybe you, you can start this, but what, what, was the, what was the significance of those words? Uh, and you know, why, why were those the only words in the, in the film? Because in the beginning, the mental state that Snarf is in is actually pretty positive. He's whistling, he's looking up at the sky, he's thinking that things are about to shift and change for the better. But he lets that little anxious bug kind of, you know, travel through where he's looking and really take hold of where his path is going. And again, it goes back to the state of life that we were both in at that time where everything just felt really uncertain and chaotic. And, you know, even when everything's going bad, you still want to believe and try to shift your brain into something more positive, even if it's a little delusional. Mm -hmm. So I think that was like <laughs> the goal of just like, you know, things are looking up, man. Like, even though everything's burning, I don't know if you've seen that meme where there's the dog and he's surrounded by fire. And he's like, Holy oh, yeah. And he's like, this is great. This is fine. Like that's kind of <laughs> kind of a, a good description of any creative mind, I think, a lot of the time, because being creative and entre entrepreneur in general can just seem so uncertain everywhere. You know, it's you make a lot of money, next month you can't pay rent. So it's just kind of a an expression of that that period of our lives and feeling really like we're gonna get through this. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So, um, sidetracking slightly away from the film, right? So you're saying this is kind of, it was like that the one text sparked it and it was like, oh, wow. Like this is, this is a story that we want to share, but also has a lot of, um, you know, meaning to us individually as, or together as, as it's happening in our real lives. Right. So what is, what has been, 
how has the journey been of creating this piece just for yourselves and, and how that might be relating to, you know, the phrase of, you know, things looking up and, and how you've kind of, you know, poured your own um, emotions and, and how you're feeling into this piece. Like, how has that, how has that been for you personally? I mean, Courtney, I want to hear your opinion on this as well, but I, I know for me that the past two projects that we did together, Septaria and Kerfuffle have been a huge lesson in not giving up and like you know we had the funds at the time to get really far in this project but then halfway through which was about maybe a year or so uh, we realized that we had made a mistake on part of the creative and we had to kind of double back and redo a huge portion of it and I was you know more on the side of like oh well we, you know we're gonna give up we can't do this we can't afford it and Courtney has always been the person in the project to be like, no, we're going to fucking make it great. We're not going to give up. We're going to find the funds and it's going to happen. And like, that was a huge lesson for me to just be like, you know what? She's right. Like the thing that matters at the end of the day is to, to really like always believe in yourself and never give up. So, so that was like, you know, through all the hard times, I think it was just a teacher of, of uh, perseverance. <laughs> mm -hmm. Courtney, yeah, I think, I think in making it, I mean, for me, um, yeah, I would never, I, I always want to see it to the utmost peak that it can reach, but um, just, just like in, in watching it over and over and partaking in the process, I've related so much to the metaphor that it's using um, in so many different areas of my life where it feels like that. And I'm not sure if that's necessarily the question, but um, I think like there were just direct mirrors between, yeah, making this project where we were at in life and, and what we were depicting within the film. Yeah, I mean, from start to finish emotionally, then with financially, like it was, it, it was like a two or three year arc of that being exactly what the, the primary feeling was um, within like the experience of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so I've, I've watched it three times now. Um, mm -hmm. So as you, uh, Courtney, as you kind of mentioned, you, you watch it, you know, I don't know at what frequency, but as you're, as you rewatch it, um, kind of, what do you think, what do you, what are you thinking as you, as you're watching it? What, what sort of emotions do you have? Is it, um, do you view it more of like appreciating your, the work that the hard work that you guys have put through, or is it kind of a representation of, of that point of your kind of life and artistic process of, of going through those, those various things? I think it's a bit of both when I watch it. Um, every time I see it, I'm very proud of it. And the thing that sticks out to me is that I feel like the fusion between Sarah and I, we have a very specific taste and intuitively and psychically, we just get that, we just get it. We're on the same level of like understanding which artists we wanna work with and what we wanna bring out of them. And um, the work on Kerfuffle is not the typical style that the animators that we worked with are furthering right now. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of pushed them to go in this very specific direction. And I think that the result was, it's breathtaking to me. Um, and so mostly whenever I watch it, I just am so grateful and in awe of the imagery. And then it's like these multiple layers of having that understanding and then knowing who to work with and that flowing and working out and them being open also to take their work in a different direction. So I'd say that's the primary feeling that I get when I watch it now. That's good. And Sarah, I'm not sure um, what, what you're experiencing. I mean, for me, the most exciting part about watching it, and I think that this is what makes me really happy that we don't really put any dialogue in anything we make, mm -hmm. is because every time that I watch it, the per I like seeing it in front of people and then having them reflect what their experience is of the film. Because 
I've had people who deal with addiction and they think that that's what is being portrayed. Or some people watch it and think it's an extremely positive experience and that they're actually becoming their God self. So it's like, depending on what ask, like what point people are in their lives, that's what they see in the things that we make. And that's the thing that I want to further and continue to develop. That's super fun. Yeah. That yeah. Is, fun. <laughs> is that, is that kind of, do you think that that's a similar trait to how you kind of mentioned you don't put a lot of dialogue in your other works? Is that one of the more enjoyable aspects of, of kind of your artistic process? Do you think? It's just been the thing that's been being birthed between us without us even being conscious of it. And even like the things that we plan to create in the future are still along the same lines of that. And I think it's just like, you know, our baby is, doesn't speak a lot. <laughs> <laughs> just feels. <laughs> just feels. There's, yeah. there's communication in other forms. You don't need to be speaking. Yeah. I think, I think if a piece can stand on its own without words, then that's what really makes it strong. If someone wants to watch something through because normally you're being so taken in and drawn in by the dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're intrigued without it, I feel like that's the mark of, of some real art. Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned a little bit of kind of future project ideas. Is this, is this of Kerfluffle, right? Um, and you'd mentioned this in your previous piece. I can't remember the name of that one. Okay. Yes. Um, is this a, a, a pretty typical way in which you two collaborate on a piece is, is through the, 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 the way that you've done kerfuffle or is it, is it different um, than the way you typically work together? Usually the way that ideas happen between us are we will just be either having an experience or we'll be on the phone or just having a really emotional episode. <laughs> and, um, and then something will spark from that. And usually it's like, or not all the time, but I'll kind of have an imagery that I see and then Courtney will see an entire world built already from that. Um, like even with future projects, this idea we have called Creatures, I think will be like the most built out version of just emotionally how we see people um, and like turning that and abstractifying that into something that is, is similar to like Kerfuffle or Sedaria. But Courtney, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, so Creatures is um, our upcoming venture, which would be way more involved than anything we've made before because it, it's taking individuals and then we would be having really immersive processes between ourselves and them in getting to know them um, and kind of bringing out their, their deepest unresolved trauma or issues and personifying that in the form of a creature and creating an entire episode and mini world around how that creature behaves, what it looks like, where it goes, what kinds of mischief does it get into? Mm -hmm. um, and then in different styles that match the, the vibe of the people we would be working with. So that's, that's our next project. I love that. The, what is, um... What's kind of the evolution of that been like? I guess basically what you just described of kind of how you work together, um, the the projects that you you have worked on, and with in addition to Kerfluffle, and then kind of the the creatures project you have going now. It's like a lot of representation of um, you know different types of emotions within an individual and expressing those in these these kind of animated. Um, type ways, right, and in, in building that world around it, right. Um, when did when did that idea or that type of uh, collaboration begin? Um, and then maybe over the years, how do you feel like that has evolved to become to where you're at today? I mean, I'm trying to think of what first sparked Sateria. Um, a hot spring. <laughs> yeah, hot spring. Yeah, I think that our brains just naturally, for some reason, and I've never even met someone who thinks this way, so we're, we're lucky to have found each other, but mm -hmm. um, anytime that I have an experience, I don't see it as the experience. I immediately see it as this, like, color or form or sound. So 
I think that that just is naturally where our brains go. And then every time we have an experience, it's actually just turns itself into a story. And then we're good at building that out. <laughs> I don't know how to express it. I think we're both uh, extremely interested in understanding other people. And we ask a lot of questions and we want to know uh, just really quickly, deeply how they're feeling and how they beyond the surface shit that everyone talks about, like, you know, like let's go deeper. We're all humans here. And I think that our work is just a growing process of diving further into the human psyche. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like, yeah, that's really what it's about for us. Got you. I love that. Um, so let's talk about so the um, this NFT drop um, with Portion. Um, so there's there's varying um, varying tiers. There's going to be um, there's a lot of details around them that I can kind of share in the um, kind of the outro of, of this. But maybe maybe um, outside of the details um, of the NFT drop specifically dates, uh, what's in, included and in things like that. But what do you hope? folks that um, are a part of this NFT drop can kind of take away from this kind of kerfluffle, I guess, experience and community? Like what, what is the, what was the objective of, of kind of introducing the NFT drop to this short and kind of what do you hope people gain from being a part of a part of the project? Cause this is kind of a way for people outside of the, you know, the actual creation of the short film to become a part of the community. Um, so is there anything in mind in particular that you have that you, that you would hope people can get out of it? Um, I'm hoping that people can just kind of get a chance to be closer to the main character, mm -hmm. um, because he kind of is just a representation of all of us. And I really want people to have a piece of that in case we do decide to do like a sequel of Kerfuffle or do physical pieces. That's our, our future plan is like to really have tiny sculptures and things like that. So people can start to collect the creatures that we create in future projects. And um, yeah, just like be able to have these things in their home, you know? I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Connection to the connection to the work, connection to the meaning. Exactly. Yeah. We'd yeah. love to start forming and developing a community um, that's really connected between art, emotion, mental health, uh, psychology, and I feel like we both see a potential to grow it into a much larger universe mm -hmm. um, with creatures yeah. too. Like there's a nice crossover there between um, digital and then metaverse world. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I'd be very curious to see kind of as you were describing earlier, kind of the reactions of people who watch um, watch the short. I'd be curious to see some of these reactions that'll happen when people start to feel um, much more attached to that that community that you're you're looking to build, as you kind of mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, what has maybe back on that because um, I think that. Um, you know, one of one of the things that I feel like NFTs allow you to do is 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 those kind of more, um, I guess, perimeter type um, ownership or or feeling like a part of communities that may traditionally not have been able to, I guess, have such a, um, you know, such a definition. I guess mm -hmm. if that makes sense, but. Yeah. Um, what are what are some of the highlights? Because you mentioned earlier, one of the things you like most is watching people watch this film. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just kind of trying to. I'm, I'm thinking, looking forward. I, I'm I'm very curious to see how people react when they start to you know feel ownership of this community. Um, so, what are some of the? What were some of the? Obviously, don't name names or anything like that. But what were some of the? Your favorite reactions to when you, you know, put out Kerfuffle. <sighs> Oh, man, <laughs> <laughs> Last night we had just such a nice message um, from my friend. He he played it. Uh, he was at a festival doing an installation, and he said that it had moved him so much that and brought up so much for him that he had to play it for all of his friends, and that it also brought up so much for them. And he really felt like it was a key to something. So that was a really powerful mm -hmm. reaction. Um, I think 
to, to come in out of the blue. I wasn't expecting to hear anything from him. Yeah. And that was what he told me. So that's beautiful. That's great. What about you, Young? Any, 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 any standouts? Any standout reactions? Um, I'm trying to think because they're just so. I mean, I think my favorite reaction is when we have people watching it on the correct speaker system because the music okay. is another element that we added really late. But I, just the difference of how people get sucked into it is crazy. And I was showing it to this creative director, who I just really admire, and had you know, he was surround sound, had the big screen. And then he was a talking, like, he's a very spastic person, very ADHD. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden he was just like hypnotized by this thing and watched it all the way through without blinking or like looking away at all. And um, that was one of my favorite reactions, just like to see how people like really get involved in the world and really don't feel interested in anything else that's going on around them. And um, yeah, I think that's definitely whenever I can like get people to sit down and not be distracted. It's always yeah, <laughs> I took a video at the screening of the reactions watching it and people were glued, like they didn't look away mm -hmm. once. Exactly. It was and it's such an interesting video to have of the experience. Yeah. yeah, it's cool because I don't even react to like that to a lot of films. So to be able to be someone who can give that to people is, something that I look for in entertainment. So I really yeah. hope I can match that. I think that the kind of digital art, um, obviously short films and kind of NFTs just in general as a whole, it's the way in which you experience them that is kind of, it's like, it's really interesting if how, because we have screens everywhere, you know, I could be on the subway and it could be really loud and I could have one ear, earbud in and someone could send me the link and then I could watch it and I, you know, it might be great, but then it's like, I'm distracted and there's just a, 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 like a crazy amount of, you're not really experiencing the art piece basically. And right. then, so I, I, so I was a civil engineer, right? So like, I really like architecture and my favorite part about not my favorite part, but one of my favorite parts about going to like an art museum or an art gallery is these spaces are like physically designed to um, basically make art look as good as possible, like a painting, like the perfect lighting. Uh, they don't let too many people in. That's why you have ticketing, um, mm -hmm. you know, space, the kind of like, you know, spatial awareness kind of points you to where you should stand to observe a piece. Um, and I think we're kind of in an experimental phase right now with digital art um, yeah. and visual art uh, or yeah. like, right? Because, because we have screens everywhere and it's like, okay, what is the proper way to view this? And um, one, of the, one of the events at NFT NYC that we were at, um, it, was, uh, it was the party at Capital on the Thursday, like the last day of the, the conference. And, the, the, the first room that you walk in is this beautiful space, but there's really interesting uses of screens and NFTs everywhere. And it was just fascinating because I was like, that was a moment that like, for me, I kind of could see that, but maybe for your average person who's not really accustomed to the NFT space, like that's a click moment. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess folks that are maybe who haven't seen Kerfluffle or who want to watch it again, what is your idealistic way to view it? You mentioned a sound system. Yeah. Um, is there is there like a process? Do you want people to journal ahead of time? Do you want people to make sure that their phone is off? Or how, mm -hmm. how would you idealistically like your audience to view the short? I mean, ideally, definitely have some type of amazing speaker. You know, the best way that you can hear it, I think it will really bring you into the experience. Um, watching it with people, I think, is interesting, too, because you can compare with them what they thought it meant and then kind of work off each other's interpretation. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I know that's that can be a bit hard for anybody, but that's definitely, if you want to experience it to the full degree, then you you got to put the extra effort in. You know? right. I agree. I think it's worth it, too. If, if You know, if you can, if you're willing to put in a little bit of effort, mm -hmm. you know. Payoffs way better at the end. 
Yeah, but what I think is interesting about the NFT world for creators and even like doing this drop with portion and everything is from what I've seen um, of just my little time, I think over like the past year and a half of being watching the NFT world sort of grow um, is the opportunity for independent artists who have original ideas to make what they truly want to make without too many hands in the kitchen and um, to have like be really sovereign and you know make money for yourself and i've seen so many artists that i knew hated their job before and now multimillionaires off of just being in the right place at the right time and i also think that like nfts in general if even if nfts aren't the thing that is the biggest like many years from now it's kind of opening the floodgates for us to bring our power back and not have those middlemen um so yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm really excited to see how it grows. I do think we need to incorporate more of like a community aspect or an in-person aspect, which could be cool to maybe use an NFT as a ticket for a physical event to watch Kerfuffle or to have the full experience or yeah, something like that. I think it'd be super cool as you're talking like a 360 screen and then like, Ooh. Down, like that would be so tight. <laughs> you're, you are Smurf. Yeah. yeah, I would go to that. That sounds amazing. Yeah, that would be so cool. I would love to go to that. That would be Let's great. Make it happen, Carson. Okay, next project. <laughs> Got it. Guy. I am your guy. I will make sure. Let's go. I'll be your hype man about it. Perfect. 360, 360, everywhere you look. Oh, or virtual reality. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, that would be pretty sick. Mm -hmm. Next, next piece is a, a VR short film like mm -hmm. that'd be kind of wild. yeah we were talking about that for one of the creatures episodes okay yeah all right well we'll have a follow-up interview about that project <laughs> so if you're watching this and this was you know filmed a year ago pause because the new released <laughs> vr short out today so check it out um <laughs> so I always find it really interesting. Um, obviously, obviously, this project means a lot to both of you. This NFT drop on Portion is going to be fantastic for the community to be able to feel more a part of it. Um, but also getting to know you two individually a little bit more was kind of something I was curious about. So I just I wrote down two things, right? And this isn't like investigative journalism stuff. I just looked at the links that you have on your Instagram pages, right? So we'll start with you, Courtney. Um, so the one that you linked up is an article. It's an article, the Hannah Lee Joshi mm -hmm. article you wrote. And then, so what is Fate Finds You? Number one. But then it also seems like you're doing a lot of writing about other artists and mm -hmm. understanding their perspectives. And, um, and it looks like you take a lot of time into doing that. And just based on the, way, the rate that you post, you're doing it very frequently. So to me, that seems like this is understanding other people's a big part of who you are and your art. So maybe just quickly, what is it? What is Fate Finds You? And then how do you feel like that process impacts you, but also in your work? Um, so Fate Finds You, to me, I've lived so many different lives in a really short time span. And each leap has been much better than the last as I keep trying to determine who I am as an artist. It was a long process to even reach the point of accepting or identifying as an artist. And along the way, Fate Finds You came to be as an affirmation, I suppose, of being on the right path. Um, like no matter what, as long as you keep striving, like you'll end up meeting your destiny if you're if you're always after your highest potential and um I think that that's kind of been the the running theme beneath everything I've been doing lately I'm so intrigued by incredible artists I love art and getting the chance to to speak with them and see like where they came from what they were making when they were children what their experiences have been like to reach the place they're at now um, I think, yeah, it's all like this little universe of fate. <laughs> and I just, I like explore the different sub facets every way that I can. I love that. 
I was, I, I, it especially caught my eye because I obviously also like, uh, you know, to talk to artists and understand perspectives. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, this is cool. Um, yeah. How long have you been doing that? When did you start? When did you start it? Um, I made, I was in New Mexico. I spent like seven months in solitary confinement pretty much in New Mexico. And I made the website for Fate Finds You then, but I had been, I've been working with street artists since like 2014 in different capacities. Yeah. Um, And that's really where the art element came into place because I fucking love art. I love, I love different people's expressions of art so much. Yeah. You kind of, one of the other things you said is like, it, it was kind of, it helped you through the process of even, even for you personally, accepting yourself as an artist. Mm-hmm. Curious, is that process still happening? Or if not, when, when were you like, you know what, I'm an artist? Yeah, it happens. Uh, I mean, multiple times a week, I would say like the other <laughs> day I was in the middle of like doing a kickboxing workout and just was like, oh, I'm a writer. I still question like whether or not I'm a writer, even though I have like thousands of pages of writing. Um, I think that the most difficult part of that for me is that I'm not seeking kind of acclaim through traditional routes. So it's been a struggle because I feel like my art is not, it doesn't look like anyone else's and it doesn't follow a traditional path. So that's what's been the hardest to grasp, like this internal validation and this external validation. And you don't need any validation, but I I don't know. (laughs) So. Well, I, I feel like you're you you're you're definitely expressing yourself, and I feel like maybe in its simplest form, that is that is art, and so yeah, uh, it's really fun to see the process and the products that you're producing. So beautiful, that's good. Um, Sarah Yonk, okay, your link. So you have a link tree, right? And so I watched <laughs> the video, the one video that you had on your link tree. And it was uh, the professor pre- presents meditation. Yeah. And I think there was a couple others. So I, I didn't know what that was before I watched it. Um, what is that first? Maybe, <laughs> maybe a little reason behind the, you know, that being, because you only have three links. I know. And that's one of them. I, I like through a, you know, I drank like two espresso shots and I was like, I got to give people a place to find all this stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I just made a link tree and I, I linked one and then I think I just came down from that high and I was going to come back to it. But I, <laughs> but yeah, the professor is basically like my first expression really of something as a director mm-hmm. um, because I grew up a really huge fan of stop motion, you know, like Nightmare Before Christmas and all of those just like chicken run and <laughs> like all those really I love like, chicken run yeah like those messy little clay such a good movie creatures. yeah um so i really wanted to make something of my own and i just had this like i don't know if you've ever seen do the right thing but there's this radio guy samuel L. jackson who kind of like every morning he'll do like do some snarky shit on on the radio before he plays some nice tunes Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to do like a version of that, um, of this, this bunny that lives in the sky and he just speaks truths down to earth. And um, so I ended up partnering with my friend Foster at Movie Mountain, who's a really weird guy. He like lives in the mountains of Seattle and lives in a tree house. That's a different story. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we kind of just partnered on that and I, I got with a really great team from Leica and um, we ended up making a series about this this creature and i think you know at a time again it was just like things that i was going through things that i was inspired by like alan watts or neil degrasse tyson um and i was really getting into mushrooms so there's a lot of terence mckenna in there as well um but yeah i kind of just wanted to express that through this guy and hopefully like if it's coming through a medium of this creature people will be able to absorb it better it's not like they're being told by a human because i think that's hard for people to to listen to yeah um, so yeah that that was kind of the first thing and then uh moved more into i, I kept doing stop motion i have this other stop motion called fud it was a bit a bit more of like a, an experimental thing mm-hmm. i went into a, a big experimental phase and um i think in general as an artist like i just like exploring different worlds that's really what i like to do like 
I don't think I'll ever be a master of one thing because I like to, I like, I love music. I love piano. I love singing. I love drawing. I love painting. All these things are just, are beautiful to me. So yeah, that's kind of, I just like exploring. <laughs> one of the, one of the quotes I wrote down from the professor presents meditation <laughs> was the, right. So we talked about swimming. Yes. Swimming to, not swimming to race anybody, but swimming to experience the water. That mm -hmm. was the quote I wrote down. Um, and then it's also, right, so talking about water, mm -hmm. talking about, like, nature and that experience, it's pretty obvious when you look at your Instagram is, like, a lot of it is in nature. A lot of it is outside. Um, same, same deal on, like, TikTok, right? It's, like, or the reels yeah. that you have, right? It's all in nature. Right. Um, what is that? What, it, what do you, you, you say you like to explore different worlds. Is that what it is? Is there a connection that you have being outside? What is that relationship like? Um, yeah, I, nature is a huge part of my life. I think probably because I was born up north. Um, so I was always in trees and growing up, I never even knew what the ocean was. So I was like 10. Um, and I didn't have neighbors. So I just had to like, I was outside a lot. I was always growing my imagination. And when I, I remember this one time specifically where I still can't remember if I actually saw these beings or if they were just my imagination being so strong at the moment, but I was out on the swing and I was just staring at these treetops. And then after like an hour of just staring at them, I saw these like little elf beings like sort of hopping at, at the little, the tops of it. And they, they, in my memory, are so ingrained, look so real that I still don't know if they were real or not. I mean, I think they're just my buds, but um, <laughs> that's like, so I think now I just, oh, I instinctually will go back to nature whenever I'm feeling uninspired or whenever I feel frantic from going to LA a lot. It's really grounding for me. It's really inspiring. Every time I go on a trip, uh, I come back with some type of story. Mm. so yeah I think that's it it's like a it's just a balance of like nature creating nature creating nature creating mm -hmm. and yeah that's super cool yeah. that's super cool Courtney is there anything you do uh, that you like to go to repeatedly to draw inspiration from or um I started summiting mountains two years ago oh snap <laughs> yeah dude that's it Mind was drop. like oh, the beast. oh that's chill okay it, cool. it was awesome it's so awesome like I I had been hiking for a while and then I think gradually like I went to Zion after a few years and that felt like a like an extreme park and then I ended up in Colorado two years ago and did some 14ers and I was like oh damn this is the truth <laughs> like this is the truth <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't, there's nothing, nothing to me beats that. And I really like like the hard endurance, you know, where you want to just turn around for like seven miles <laughs> yeah. um, because that come down and that peak is like, there's nothing. And the air at 14,000 feet is just in your brain. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> I miss it. Amazing. I've never summoned Well, I've, no, I've never summoned in the mountain, but I mean, <laughs> I'll add, you should. My, I'll add it to my, yeah, list. you should that and, you uh, should. and the next, you know, augmented virtual reality short film. Those are, <laughs> it's a big list. Are, those are now on my list. Yeah. Those are two things yeah. I was focused on. We'll build a mountain for you in VR that you can summon. Ooh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> Let's do that. That sounds amazing. <laughs> um, okay. So, we covered kerfuffle. We covered the process, introduced the NFTs. I feel like now I have an understanding of kind of your sources of inspiration. Is there, um, you know, with, with kerfuffle, with the upcoming NFT drop, with your kind of expression, is there anything um, else that, uh, that you kind of regularly tell your audience or, uh, you know, people experience your art? Um, Maybe it's a saying, maybe it's something that you, you regularly express. Is there anything else that we didn't cover that you kind of regularly express? Because we covered a lot, so no pressure. Yeah. I mean, I think just like fate finds you. I really, I think that's like the, to wrap it up, that's the takeaway. Because we mm -hmm. have just been spiraling through 
something for a couple of years and more beautiful things keep being birthed out of it. So I would just say, trust your intuition, listen to the little voice in your head and like be meditate, express yourself to the fullest any chance you get. Yeah. And yeah. meditate. Yes. Meditate. meditate. Work. Do your work. Yeah. Do your work, everybody. Do your work. <laughs> Do your work. Don't give up. Awesome. <laughs> Guys, this has been a wonderful. I don't know how long this has been, but it's been great. Yes. Yes. Awesome. All right. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, Carson. Have a good day. You too. To watch Kerfuffle and check out the NFT drop on Portion, please take a look at the links in the description below.